Oromo people, Wikipedia article audio. The Oromo people are an ethnic group inhabiting Ethiopia and parts of Kenya and Somalia. They are the largest ethnic group in Ethiopia and the wider Horn of Africa. According to the 2007 census, they represent approximately 34.5% of Ethiopia's population, while others estimate they make up about 40% of the population. With the total Ethiopian population thought to be over 102 million, the number of Oromo people exceeds 35 million in Ethiopia alone. Origins and Nomenclature History Pre-19th century Slavery 19th century Formation of modern Ethiopia Demographics Subgroups Language Religion Society and Culture Gadat Social Stratification Calendar Oromama Contemporary Era Ethiopian Civil War Human Rights Issues Political organizations Notable people Oromus speak the Oromo language as a mother tongue, which is part of the Cushitic branch of the Afro-Asiatic family. The word Oromo appeared in European literature for the first time in 1893 and then slowly became common in the second half of the 20th century. The Oromo people followed their traditional religion and used the Gada system of governance. A leader elected by the Gada system remains in power only for eight years with an election taking place at the end of that eight years. From the 18th century to the 19th century, Oromus were the dominant influence in northern Ethiopia during the Zamina Mesafant period. Most of the Oromo people became Christians or Muslims over the centuries, while some retained their traditional beliefs. Some have been involved in wars with northern Christians and with southern and eastern Muslims in the Horn of Africa. The origins and prehistory of the Oromo people is unclear, in part because the Oromo people did not have a written history and instead passed on stories orally prior to the 16th century. Older and subsequent colonial-era documents mention the Oromo people as Gala, but these documents were generally written by members of ethnic groups who were hostile towards them. Anthropologists and historians such as Herbert S. Lewis consider these sources to be full of distortions, biases and misunderstandings. Historical linguistics and comparative ethnology studies suggest that the Oromo people probably originated around the lakes Shamo and Stephanie. They are a Cushitic people who have inhabited the East and Northeast Africa since at least the early first millennium. The aftermath of the 16th century Abyssinian Adal War led to Oromus being able to occupy lands of the Ethiopian Empire and Adal Sultanate. The Harla were assimilated by the Oromo in Ethiopia and Somalia. The first verifiable record mentioning the Oromo people by a European cartographer is in the map made by the Italian Fra Moro in 1460, which uses the term Gala. The map was likely drawn after consultations with Ethiopian monks who visited Italy in 1441. Gala was a term for a river and a forest, as well as for the pastoral people established in the highlands of southern Ethiopia. This historical information, according to Mohammed Hassan, is consistent with the written and oral traditions of the Amhara people which also refer to the Oromo people as Gala. The historical evidence therefore suggests that the Oromo people were already established in the southern highlands in or before the 15th century, and that at least some Oromo people were interacting with other Ethiopian ethnic groups. 
After Fra Moro's mention, there is a profusion of literature about the peoples of this region including the Oromo, particularly mentioning their wars and resistance to religious conversion, primarily by European sea explorers, Christian and Islamic missionaries as well as regional writers. Fra Moro's term Gala is the most used term, however, until the early 20th century. The earliest primary account of Oromo ethnography is the 16th century history of Gala by Christian monk Bari who comes from the Saitama country of Gamo, written in the Geez language. He begins his treatise on the Oromo by introducing them in racist terms. According to an 1861 book by Diabati, a French explorer who travelled up to Kaffa in 1843, he was told that the word Gala was derived from a war cry and used by the Galas themselves. A journal published by International African Institute suggests it is an Oromo word for there is a word Gala wandering in their language. The first known use of the word Oromo to refer to this ethnic group is traceable to 1893. The historic term for them has been Gala. This term, stated Juxon Barton in 1924, was in use for these people by Abyssinians and Arabs. The word Gala has been variously interpreted, such as it means to go home, or it refers to a river named Gala in early Abyssinian tradition. Another speculated origin, states Barton, for their historic name is from the Muslim tradition, which states that when Muhammad asked them to accept Islam, the chief of this ethnic group said Gala or no, thus their name Gala. Scholarship that followed Barton, states that the label Gala for them, in historic documents, is a stereotype and has been translated by other ethnic groups as pagan, savage, inferior, enemy, and heathen, that is non-Muslim. In a far language, states Morin, Gali means crowd, foreigners, and carries derogatory connotation ordinary, commoner as opposed to Mahdi or high descent. Other societies such as the Anuak people refer all the migrant highlanders consisting of largely Amharas as Gala people while the De Greens, in the past, refer Amharas as half Gala. The term Gala was also used by Europeans before the 1974 revolution without any derogatory connotations. The Oromo never called themselves Gala, and resist its use. They traditionally identified themselves by one of their clans, and in contemporary times have used the common umbrella term of Oromo which connotes free-born people. While Oromo people have lived in this region for a long time, the ethnic mixture of peoples who have lived here is unclear. According to Alessandro Triulzi, the interactions and encounters between Oromo people and Nilo-Saharan groups likely began early. Different groups have attempted to reconstruct a speculative origin theories, wherein either Oromo are presumed heathen and expansionists who displaced another ethnic group, or the Oromo are presumed to be original people who were displaced by others. However, persuasive evidence to support various speculations has been missing. The original Oromos increased their numbers through Oromization of conquered people from other ethnic groups, and in turn others conquered people from them and converted them to their side. The native ancient names of the territories were replaced by the name of the Oromo clans who conquered it while the people were made Gabaros or this, in part, was a Oromo response to preserve their identity, as they as the third major group faced forced mass conversion by the conquering armies of Christian Abyssinians or Islamic Sultanates, often at war with each other. The word Oromo is derived from ilm orma meaning children of Oromo, or sons of men, or person, stranger. Historically, 
Afan Oromo speaking people used their own Gada system of governance. Oromus also had a number of independent kingdoms, which they shared with the Saitama people. Among these were the Jibe region kingdoms of Gera, Gama, Garo, Guma, Jima, Likanakemt, and Limuen area. The earliest known documented and detailed history of the Oromo people was by the Ethiopian monk Ababari who wrote Zanau Le Gala in 1593, though the synonymous term Galas was mentioned in maps or elsewhere much earlier. After the 16th century, they are mentioned more often, such as in the records left by Abba Paulos, Jao Bermudes, Giro Remo Lobo, Galatuas, Sirsa Dengel, and others. These records suggest that the Oromo were pastoral people in their history, who stayed together. Their animal herds began to expand rapidly and they needed more grazing lands. They began migrating, not together, but after separating. They lacked kings, and had elected leaders called Luba based on a Gata system of government instead. By the late 16th century, two major Oromo confederations emerged, Afra and Sadika, which respectively refer to four and three in their language, with Afra emerging from four older clans, and Sadika out of three. These Oromo confederations were originally based on southern parts of Ethiopia, but started moving north in the 16th century in what is termed as the Great Oromo Migration. According to Richard Pankhurst, an Ethiopia historian, this migration is linked to the first incursions into inland Horn of Africa by Imam Ahmed Ibn Ibrahim. According to historian Marianne Beckhaus-Jurst, the migration was one of the consequences of fierce wars of attrition between Christian and Muslim armies in the Horn of Africa region in the 15th and 16th century which killed a lot of people and depopulated the regions near the Gala lands, but also probably a result of droughts in their traditional homelands. Further, they acquired horses and their Gata system helped coordinate well-equipped Oromo warriors who enabled fellow Oromos to advance and settle into newer regions starting in the 1520s. This expansion continued through the 17th century. Both peaceful integration and violent competition between Oromos and other neighboring ethnicities such as the Amhara, Saitama, Adal, and the Somali affected politics within the Oromo community. Between 1500 and 1800, there were waves of wars and struggle between Highland Christians, coastal Muslim, and polytheist population in the Horn of Africa. This caused major redistribution of populations. The northern, eastern, and western movement of the Oromos from the south around 1535 mirrored the large-scale expansion by Somalis inland. The 1500-1800 period also saw relocation of the Amhara people, and helped influence contemporary ethnic politics in Ethiopia. The Somali expansion from the Ogadane Plains west towards the Juba River led to conflicts with the Oromo. This expansion, according to Digu, was a part of jihad by Somalis as a means to control the better fertile land and expand Islam, as a result, they managed to control most of what is now Ethiopia as far as the Eritrean Red Sea coasts. These geopolitical developments created a competitive conflict between the Oromos and Somalis, in competition for fertile territory and water resources. According to oral and literary evidence, Borana Oromo and Somali clans mutually victimized each other in 17th and 18th centuries, particularly near their eastern borders, but there were also periods of relative peace. According to Gunter Schlie, the Muslim Somali replaced the Borana Ormo as the dominant ethnic group in this region. The Borana violence against their neighbors, states Schlie, was unusual and unlike their behavior inside their community where violence was considered deviant. 
In the late 16th and early 17th centuries, conquests by the Abyssinian Empire in southern and southwestern Ethiopia had left a territorial vacuum, allowing the pastoral Oromo to settle in the vacated territories and incorporate socially dislocated peoples into their Gada system. As they moved into earlier Islamic hubs, the Oromos increasingly adopted Islam, and in the process markedly grew their Muslim adherent base to become one of the larger such populations in the Horn region. Pastoralist Oromos also took slaves from their own community's urban areas, as well as from other communities. According to the historian Paul E. Lovejoy, Slavery was at this time an important aspect of the social, political and economic structure of parts of Ethiopia. The slaves were classified into two groups, red slaves who spoke Afro-Asiatic languages, and black slaves called Shankala who spoke Nilo-Saharan languages. The red slaves were primarily courtesans and were more expensive they were given light duties so as to preserve their looks. The black slaves were much less expensive, and toiled in the fields and in Christian Abyssinian households. The red slaves, among which were Gala individuals, formed the bulk of captives who were exported from Abyssinian territory to the Arabian Peninsula and Persian Gulf regions, to Ottoman Empire markets, to Egypt, and elsewhere. Young female Oromo slaves served as concubines and household workers, while males were in demand for private armies and servile labor. Oromos too enslaved other ethnic groups. According to a report by Bermudas, in the 16th century, Oromos during their wars were fierce and cruel, mutilating and enslaving the people in the regions they conquered. Emperor Galatuas battled with Oromos without much success and sought Portuguese help. In the era of Imam Ahmed, according to Baris records, Oromo Luba tribes made war in Dawero against Adalmabruk, devastating the region and occupying it. They also took over Fatagar and Faj, forcing its previous inhabitants into slavery. The pagan Gala and animist Saitama or Agu slaves made up the slave caravans coming out of Ethiopia, as slavers avoided Christian or Muslim slaves. The central Amhara provinces were a part of major Afar slave caravan trade routes from the southern and southwestern Gala, Saitama and Gurij regions to the northern and eastern Ethiopia. Thousands of slaves were exported every year by Jabardi, Jalaba, Afar, Somalia and Arab merchants as the income from this trade was lucrative. According to Iram Lapidus, a professor of Middle Eastern and Islamic history, the Ethiopian slave trade benefited the Muslims, and increased the Islamization of the Oromo people. In the first decades of the 19th century, Three Oromo monarchies, Anarya, Goma, and Guma, rose to prominence. The collective area was known as Galaland and comprised most of central and southern Ethiopia, including lands now held by other ethnic regions. In the general view of Oromo people's role in Ethiopia, one of the Oromo leaders named Ras Gobanadok led the development of modern Ethiopia and the political and military incorporation of more territories into Ethiopian borders. Gobana, under the authority of Amhara ruler Emperor Manalik II, incorporated several and brought large sections of the Horn of Africa into a centralized Ethiopian state. The inter clan relationships within the Oromo people, as well as their relationship with the Amhara people who are the second largest ethnic group, have been historically complicated. There was inter-clan fighting within Oromo. Over 450 years, through the 19th century, states Donald N. Levine, the warfare between Amhara and Oromo had been more or less continuous. In the southern and western regions, 
the Oromo Amhara Wars have been as terribly destructive as those between Amhara and Muslim Sultanates in the East. In certain regions, some Oromo groups formed an alliance and cooperated with Amharatir Green authorities. The interrelationship between Oromo and Amhara peoples has been a subject of dispute, some suggesting evidence of integration while others suggesting ongoing abuse that continued through the 20th century. From one perspective, ethnically mixed Ethiopians with Oromo background made up a small percentage of Ethiopian generals and leaders. The Wolo Oromo were early Oromo holders of power among the increasingly mixed Ethiopian state. The later North to South movement of central power in Ethiopia led to Oromus and Shua holding power in Ethiopia together with the Shawan Amhara. The accounts of integration of Oromo people into a united Ethiopian nation vary widely. By one account, it was violent and forced. A school of scholars state that during the conquest of the southern territories that created the modern Ethiopia, the Nefanyagabar system brutally subordinated the Oromus. Menelik's army carried out mass atrocities during the conquest against civilians and combatants including torture, mass killings, and large-scale slavery. Large-scale atrocities were also committed against the Diza people and the people of the Kafako kingdom. Some estimates for the number of southern people killed as a result of the conquest from war, famine, and atrocities go into the millions. Menelik's Russian military aide, Alexander Bulatovich, for example, stated that in territories incorporated peacefully like Jima, Lika, and Wolaga, the former order had been preserved without interference in Oromo self-government. He said that in areas incorporated after war, the assigned rulers treated the people lawfully and justly, and did not violate their religious beliefs. Bulatovich also wrote that Menelik's armies dreadfully annihilated more than half of the Oromo population down to 5 million people, which took away from the gala all possibility of thinking about any sort of uprising. He explained some of these deaths as a consequence of many factors such as famine and diseases that ravaged this period of Ethiopian history. In some accounts, the relationship between the two largest ethnic groups of Ethiopia, Oromo and Amhara, has been described as Abyssinian feudal colonialism. According to Mikuria Bulcha, for example, Oromo were colonized by Amhara just like European colonialists in the pre-20th century period. The Abyssinian general R.A.S. Darge, according to these accounts, ordered Arsai mutilation. Oromo populations who resisted Amhara occupation were subject to amputations and disfigurement. Villages were decimated. By 1901, Parts of the Oromo territory were reduced to a third or half of their original population. According to Akbar Ahmed, Amharic sayings such as Sa Na Gala highlighted Amhara's contempt towards the Oromo. In the 1960s, political disputes emerged with reports of discrimination in educational opportunities for Oromo by Amhara leaders. Others, on the other hand, disagree with colonial thesis. According to Paolo's Milkias and Getachu Metaferia, Amhara and Oromo have shared same geographical and historical space, both are intertwined culturally, economically, and politically, millions of people trace their origin from both groups, elite Oromus were the regional kingmakers such as in Gondar and Shua and intermarriage between Amhara and Oromo ruling elites was and is extensive. Thousands of Amharas from nobles to peasants and from educate to illiterate served loyally under Oromo ministers and generals, which, Milkias and Metaferia state, would be like having thousands of Englishmen, nobles, and commoners loyally serving African ministers and generals in England.
All this is inconsistent with the Amhara colonized Oromo thesis, something that neither happened nor can happen under a colonial system. According to some scholars, Oromo became part of the Ethiopian nobility without losing their identity. Others state that the marginalization of the Oromos during Amhara rule led many to change their names to blend in with the Amhara population. According to Itsuko Karan Matsuoka and John Sorensen, there was large-scale cruel exploitation of Oromo peasants in the 19th and 20th centuries, but the situation has been more complex because some Oromos crossed ethnic lines and collaborated with the Abyssinian forces. This period also marked individual Oromos reaching high ranks in Ethiopian military, and several royal family members of this era were partially of Oromo descent. For example, V was the designated but uncrowned emperor of Ethiopia, while Haile Selassie I was the crowned and generally acknowledged emperor of Ethiopia from 1930 to 1974. Other Oromo people reached high positions in the emerging Ethiopia. The Oromo traditionalists state that those who rose to powerful positions did so by rejecting their Oromoness, by rejecting their culture and adopting the other culture. Some in Ethiopia see Oromo as integral architects and a part of one nation, others see a long history of denigration, treatment as primitive barbarians by Amhara and other ethnic groups, and a need to resurrect Oromo culture and history. The Oromo people are the largest ethnic group in Ethiopia, estimated to be over 35 million people in 2016. Their population is dispersed over a large region. They speak 74 ethnically diverse language groups. About 95% are settled agriculturalists and nomadic pastoralists, practicing archaic farming methods and living at subsistence level. A few live in the urban centers. Oromos today are concentrated in the Oromia region in central Ethiopia, which is the largest region in the country in terms of both population and size. They are present in large numbers in other central, western and southern provinces of Ethiopia. Group members also have a notable presence in northern Kenya in the Marzabit County, and in the Wello and Tigray regions of Eritrea. The Oromo are divided into two major branches that break down into an assortment of clan families. From west to east. The Borana Oromo, also called the Baran, are a pastoralist group living in southern Ethiopia and northern Kenya. The Buran inhabit the former provinces of Shua, Welaga, Ilobabor, Kefa, Jima, Saitamo, northern and northeastern Kenya, and a small refugee population in some parts of Somalia. Barantus Barantu or Bere Tuma is the other moiety of the Oromo people. The Barantu Oromo inhabit the eastern parts of the Oromia region in the zones of Murab Hararg or West Hararg, Arsai Zone, Bale Zone, Dibab Murab Shua Zone or Southwest Shua, Dyer Dawa Region, the Jajiga Zone of the Somali Region, Administrative Zone 3 of the Afar Region, Oromia Zone of the Amhara Region, and are also found in the Raya Azebo Warda in the Tigray Region. The Oromo speak the Oromo language as a mother tongue. It belongs to the Cushitic branch of the Afroasiatic family. According to Ethnologue, there are around 17,465,900 Oromo speakers worldwide. The Oromo language is divided into four main linguistic varieties. Borana Arsaiguji Oromo, Eastern Oromo, Orma, and West Central Oromo. Onesimos Nisab was a founder of the Oromo modern literature. Modern writing systems used to transcribe Oromo include the Latin script. 
The Ethiopic script had previously been used by Oromo communities in West Central Ethiopia up until the 1990s. Additionally, the Sipolo script was historically used to write Oromo. It was invented by the Oromo scholar Sheikh Bakri Sipolo during the 1950s. Christianity was adopted in Ethiopia early in 340 CE by the Kingdom of Aksum. Ethiopia was an early Christian kingdom that remained in power through the modern era. Islam arrived from the coastal region during the medieval era, across the Gulf of Aden, and led to the creation of warring Islamic sultanates such as Hadiya, Bali, Fatagar, Dawero, and Adal. These kingdoms and sultanates ruled or influenced the history of Oromo people. The influential Thirty Year War from 1529 to 1559 between the three parties the Oromo, the Christians, and the Muslims dissipated the political strengths of all three. The religious beliefs of the Oromo people evolved in this socio political environment. In the 19th century and first half of the 20th century, neither the Muslim controlled areas, nor the areas where the Ethiopian Orthodox Church was dominant, would allow Protestant or Catholic missionaries to proselytize among them, and these missions focused their efforts in the southern provinces of Greater Ethiopia where Oromo people following the traditional religions lived. In the 2007 Ethiopian census for Oromia region, which included both Oromo and non-Oromo residents, there was a total of 13,107,963 followers of Christianity, 12,835,410 followers of Islam, 887,773 followers of traditional religions, and 162,787 followers of other religions. According to James Minahan, about half of the Oromo people are Sunni Muslim, a third are Ethiopian Orthodox, and the rest are mostly Protestants or follow their traditional religious beliefs. The traditional religion is more common in southern Oromo populations, Christianity more common in and near the urban centers, while Muslims are more common near the Somalian border and in the north. Adherence to traditional practices and rituals is still common among many Oromo people regardless of religious background. Wa'uk is the name of God in the traditional Oromo religion, which only about 3% of the population of Oromia follows today, many of those who do live in the Borna zone. Oromo people were traditionally a culturally homogeneous society with genealogical ties. They governed themselves in accordance with Gadat, a limited democratic socio-political system long before the 16th century, when major three-party wars commenced between them and the Christian kingdom to their north and Islamic sultanates to their east and south. The Gadat system elected males from five Oromo Mizinsa, for a period of eight years, for various judicial, political, ritual and religious roles. Retirement was compulsory after the eight-year term, and each major clan followed the same Gadas system. Women and people belonging to the lower Oromo castes were excluded. A male born in the upper Oromo society went through five stages of eight years, where his life established his role and status for consideration to a Gadat office. Under Gadat, every eight years, the Oromo would choose by consensus an Ababuki responsible for justice, peace, judicial, and ritual processes, an Abaduola responsible as the war leader, an Abatsaa responsible as the leader for cows, and other positions. Like other ethnic groups in the Horn of Africa and East Africa, Oromo people regionally developed social stratification consisting of four hierarchical strata. The highest strata were the nobles called the Borana, below them were the Gaburo. 
Below these two upper castes were the despised castes of artisans, and at the lowest level were the slaves. In the Islamic kingdom of Jima, the Oromo society's caste strata predominantly consisted of endogamous, inherited artisanal occupations. Each caste group has specialized in a particular occupation such as iron working, carpentry, weapon making, pottery, weaving, leather working and hunting. Each caste in the Oromo society had a designated name. For example, Tumta were smiths, Fuga were potters, Fakai were tanners and leather workers, Semino were weavers, Gigurta were beekeepers and honey makers, and Wada were hunters and foragers. While slaves were a strata within the society, many Oromus, regardless of caste, were sold into slavery elsewhere. By the 19th century, Oromo slaves were sought after and a major part of slaves sold in Gondar and Galabat slave markets at Ethiopia-Sudan border, as well as the Misawa and Tajuram markets on the Red Sea. The Oromo people developed a lunisolar calendar, which likely dates from a pre-16th century period and before the Great Migration because different geographically and religiously distinct Oromo communities use the same calendar. This calendar is sophisticated and similar to ones found among the Chinese, the Hindus, and the Mayans. It was tied to the traditional religion of the Oromos, and used to schedule the Gata system of elections and power transfer. The Borana Oromo calendar system was once thought to be based upon an earlier Cushitic calendar developed around 300 BC found at Namore Tunga. Reconsideration of the Namore Tunga site led astronomer and archaeologist Clive Ruggles to conclude that there is no relationship. The New Year of the Oromo people, according to this calendar, falls in the month of October. The calendar has no weeks but a name for each day of the month. It is a lunar stellar calendar system. Some modern authors such as Jemecho Medjursa have proposed the concept of Oromuma, or Oromonas as a cultural common between Oromo people. The word is derived by combining Oromo with the Arabic term Umma. However, according to Terjsteb and other scholars this term is a neologism from the late 1990s and has been questioned to its link to Oromo ethno-nationalism and Salaf Islamic discourse in their disagreement with Christian Amhara and other ethnic groups. The Oromo people, depending on their geographical location and historical events, have variously converted to Islam, Christianity, or remained with their traditional religion. According to Jemecha Medjursa, the subjective reality is that neither traditional Oromo rituals nor traditional Oromo beliefs function any longer as a cohesive and integral symbol system for the Oromo people, not just regionally but even locally. The cultural and ideological divergence within the Oromo people, in part from their religious differences, is apparent from the constant impetus for negotiations between broader Oromo spokespersons and those Oromo who are Al Al Sunnah followers, states Terj Steb. The internally evolving cultural differences within the Oromos have led some scholars such as Mario Aguilar and Abdullahi Shangolo to conclude that that a common identity acknowledged by all Oromo in general does not exist. In 1973, Oromo discontent with their position led to the formation of the Oromo Liberation Front, which began political agitation in the Oromo areas. That year there was also a catastrophic famine in which over one quarter of a million people died from starvation before the government recognized the disaster and permitted relief measures. The majority who died were Ormus and Amharas from Wolo, Afars and Tigrayans. There were strikes and demonstrations in Addis Ababa in 1974, and in February of that year, Haile Selassie's government was replaced by the Derg, 
a military junta led by Mengistu Haile Mariam, but the council was still Amhara dominated, with only 25 non Amhara members out of 125. In 1975, the government declared all rural land state owned, and announced the end of the tenancy system. However, much of the benefit of this reform was counteracted by compulsive collectivization, state farms, and forced resettlement programs. In 1991, the DERG was replaced by the EPERDF. Initially, Oromo intellectuals and the OLF joined the transitional government alongside EPERDF. However, the TPLF branch of EPERDF created an Oromo party to marginalize the OLF and eventually expel it from the country. Despite increased harassment on Oromos, the OPDO presided over the advancement of Oromo language and culture over the last two decades. The TPLF is widely known to use this progress in Oromo cultural and linguistic empowerment as an achievement and a mandate for Epard to rule the nation. However, most Oromos still do not believe they have political rights and many of them support the OLF and other opposition parties including the Oromo Federalist Congress. In December 2009, a 96-page report titled Human Rights in Ethiopia, Through the Eyes of the Oromo Diaspora, compiled by the Advocates for Human Rights, documented human rights violations against the Oromo in Ethiopia under three successive regimes, the Ethiopian Empire under Haile Selassie, the Marxist Derg and the current Ethiopian government of the Ethiopian People's Revolutionary Democratic Front, dominated by members of the Tigrayan People's Liberation Front and which was accused to have arrested approximately 20,000 suspected OLF members, to have driven most OLF leadership into exile, and to have effectively neutralized the OLF as a political force in Ethiopia. According to the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, the Oromia Support Group recorded 594 extrajudicial killings of Oromos by Ethiopian government security forces and 43 disappearances in custody between 2005 and August 2008. Starting in November 2015, during a wave of mass protests, mainly by Oromos, over the expansion of the municipal boundary of the capital, Addis Ababa, into Oromia, over 500 people have been killed and many more have been injured, according to human rights advocates and independent monitors. The protests have since spread to other ethnic groups and encompass wider social grievances. Ethiopia declared a state of emergency in response to Oromo and Amhara protests in October 2016. Most Oromos do not have political unity today due to their historical roles in the Ethiopian state and the region, the spread out movement of different Oromo clans, and the differing religions inside the Oromo nation. Accordingly, Oromos played major roles in all three main political movements in Ethiopia during the 19th and 20th century. In addition to holding high powers during the centralist government and the monarchy, the Raya Ormus in the Tigray regional state played a major role in the Wayana revolt, challenging Emperor Haile Selassie I's rule in the 1940s. Simultaneously, both federalist and secessionist political forces developed inside the Oromo community. Presently, a number of ethnic-based political organizations have been formed to promote the interests of the Oromo. The first was the Mecha and Tulema Self-Help Association founded in January 1963, but disbanded by the government after several increasingly tense confrontations in November, 1966. Later groups include the Oromo Liberation Front, Oromo Federalist Democratic Movement, the United Liberation Forces of Oromia, the Islamic Front for the Liberation of Oromia, 
the Oromia Liberation Council, the Oromo National Congress and others. Another group, the Oromo People's Democratic Organization, is one of the four parties that form the ruling Ethiopian People's Revolutionary Democratic Front Coalition. However, these Oromo groups do not act in unity, the ONC, for example, was part of the United Ethiopian Democratic Forces Coalition that challenged the EPERDF in the Ethiopian general elections of 2005. A number of these groups seek to create an independent Oromo nation, some using armed force. Meanwhile, the ruling OPDO and several opposition political parties in the Ethiopian parliament believe in the unity of the country which has 80 different ethnicities. But most Oromo opposition parties in Ethiopia condemn the economic and political inequalities in the country. Progress has been very slow, with the Oromia International Bank just recently established in 2008, though Oromo owned a Wash International Bank started early in the 1990s. The first private Afan Oromo newspaper in Ethiopia, Jima Times, also known as Yuru, was recently established, but it has faced a lot of harassment and persecution from the Ethiopian government since its beginning. Abuse of Oromo media is widespread in Ethiopia and reflective of the general oppression Oromas face in the country. University departments in Ethiopia did not establish a curriculum in Afan Oromo until the late 1990s because they lacked the technical expertise and resources. Various human rights organizations have publicized the government persecution of Oromas in Ethiopia for decades. In 2008, OFDM opposition party condemned the government's indirect role in the death of hundreds of Oromas in western Ethiopia. According to Amnesty International, between 2011 and 2014, at least 5,000 Oromas have been arrested based on their actual or suspected peaceful opposition to the government. These include thousands of peaceful protesters and hundreds of opposition political party members. The government anticipates a high level of opposition in Oromia, and signs of dissent are sought out and regularly, sometimes preemptively, suppressed. In numerous cases, Actual or suspected dissenters have been detained without charge or trial, killed by security services during protests, arrests and in detention. According to Amnesty International, there is a sweeping repression in the Oromo region of Ethiopia. On December 12, 2015, the German broadcaster Deutsche Welle reported violent protests in the Oromo region of Ethiopia in which more than 20 students were killed. According to the report, the students were protesting against the government's rezoning plan named Addis Ababa Master 5 Plan. On October 2, 2016, Nearly 700 festival-goers were massacred at the most sacred and largest event among the Oromo, the Eritrea Cultural Thanksgiving Festival. In just one day, hundreds were killed and many more injured in what will go down in history as one of the darkest days for the Oromo people. Every year, millions of Oromos, the largest ethnic group in Ethiopia, gather in Bishoftu for this annual celebration. However this year, the festive mood quickly turned chaotic after Ethiopian security forces responded to peaceful protests by firing tear gas and live bullets at over 2 million people surrounded by a lake and cliffs.